This session from the book, Choose Your Enemies Wisely, by Patrick, good if around, by Patrick Bet David. Uh, really interesting book. It's a lot for business leaders, business owners, so if you're not that, maybe we'll recommend you read it, read it. but the, the premise around this is basically creating emotion, creating drive, creating that inner purpose to go out there and win and beat, and working with um, that level of beating this person, beating that person, and it takes us through, basically, as the book says, choosing your enemies wisely, why we should use some of our enemies for driving fuel, but we shouldn't be trying and focusing around beating them, and why we shouldn't be focused on beating enemies that are worthless and not worth our time. We should be focusing on, on, the, on the enemies that are worth our time. And here, we'll go through that session in the book. 14 enemies, and number 14 being the one that you need to focus on. Um, <laughs> book, if you don't read, recommend you do. Patrick ben David, one of the guys that I'm absolutely all over at the moment, um, and he's just written this book, and it's only just come out. So his other book is, uh, I can't remember what the name was called. Something, Strategies 5 something, I can't remember. But this is really good, and this is called, um, ironically, as you can see in the front, uh, Choose Your Enemies Wisely, and I'm going to talk about that part of the book, albeit that is only one part of what it talks about. So, in essence, his recommendation is that you choose your enemies wisely, obviously, but you choose enemies to inspire you to, to drive more, right? If there is one thing that, when you look at any business person that you will know the name of, they have crippling insecurities that make them continue on. Right? Have you ever heard the saying, or have you ever heard anybody say, if I won the lottery, I'd never go to work again? Right? Well, Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, Richard Branson, and all the rest of the bloody guys that you've heard of and you know of have won the lottery multiple times and they are still running their organizations and they are still working as hard as hell. Right? Elon Musk was a multimillionaire and he still slept on the floor of a, of a factory um, just to get. Uh, Tesla back to where it was. So it was never there, but to get Tesla into a position where it wasn't going to be one of basically. And it's the same with SpaceX, um, and because he lives in Britain. Okay, so th this is an element that will help achieve that. Now, I'm going to read out some, uh, some things here, and I want you to write down uh, 14 uh, different types of, of enemies, albeit we'll save the 14th for the last. So, I just want you to write down the first name that comes to your head. I'm not going to go through this. Some of this will bring a level of um, maybe not emotion, but well, potentially emotion, but it may bring you a level because if, you, if I said something like um, someone you hate, it may be that you got bullied at school, it may be that there's someone who's always been awful to you and you want to write their name down. Write that name down. I'm not going to go through any of this with you. Um, I'm going to take you in a different direction than the, the route you think you're going in. So, the f number one is I want you to write down someone you hate, someone you truly cannot stand. So, when you think of their name, you just think, I fucking hate you. <laughs> write down someone you hate. First name that comes to your head. Number two. And this may bring a level of hesitation, but I want to write you write down the first name that comes to your head, and it might be the mom or dad, and that is fine. We're not hating on them, but relatives who try to hold you back. And I want to put a little bit of context around this. Um, don't work so hard. Don't do this. Don't do that. Why are you working late? Why are you doing calls outside of hours? It might be that that's a good message for you that you want to hear, and that's fine, right? But it also might be that your goals are to be a millionaire, to earn 100,000 as X, Y, Z, to build 500K, to build a million pounds, whatever it would be, and I'm not sure that that kind of message will help you achieve that. So it's up to you. It's not a hate on your parents, it's not a hate on your grandma, on, on your uncle, on your brother, it's just a perspective of, of uh, relatives who try to hold you back. Uh, number three might be a little bit um, difficult, potentially, but manipulators. So anybody that 
that gives you a level of manipulation. Anyone in the past that's tried to manipulate you doesn't need to be current. It can be historical. This could be something, you know, you remember in nursery that, you know, some kid pushed you over and you banged your head and you've forever got that scar and you hate for it. It could be that. Four gossipers. Anyone in your life that's a particular gossiper, you tell them something, they share it around, they come and tell you that Deirdre down the road has done X, Y, and Z, and you're like, fuck me. <laughs> fuck me, Karen. I don't care. Right? Whatever it is, gossipers. Number five, particularly powerful one, someone to prove wrong. Who's told you never going to achieve it? I was told by my year six teacher that um, I'm a nice guy, but I'll probably never amount to anything. That came from a year six teacher on parents' evening to my mom. Dad was probably working. But as you can probably fucking imagine, my mom hit the roof. How can you say that to an 11 year old? What was that? <laughs> Uh, someone to prove wrong. That's sad. Great teaching. I can't remember his name. He looked like the demon headmaster. <laughs> That's all I remember about it. Someone to prove wrong. So there might be multiple people on there. It's who's written you off? Who's told you you're never going to achieve anything? You know, what teacher told you you're never going to amount to anything? <clears throat> Person in your friendship group told you you're never going to amount to anything. It's probably going to be somebody this close to you because that's where the emotion comes from. You walk down the road and someone goes, you'll never amount to anything. You're like, cheers, mate. See you later. You probably won't remember that. So this is going to be people that have a, you have a relationship with and you can be best friends with somebody that also has a level of something against you. Number six, your... This is going to be difficult. I'm going to put your ex-spouse or former business partner. This is obviously led towards uh, business um, owners and leaders. So I would also say... Um, your ex, uh, ex employee, your ex colleague, you can add into that. Anyone you've worked in in a, in a work um, perspective, any ex girlfriends that you want to throw in there, someone you've had a relationship with. I don't worry about this impression. <coughs> Number seven, someone who doubts you. That's probably an easy one. Number eight, people who quit on you. Okay, so what I need for 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13 is you to allow a little bit of space so you can write something after it. Okay, because I'm going to give you your number 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. I'd like you to write your own name down for 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13, and then I'm going to tell you what they are. Write your own name down. Write your own name down, Alex. Right, or Ollie's name down, or, yeah. Susan's, my like boss. So, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13, you are your worst enemy. I'm sure you've heard that a fucking million times. But number nine is your scarcity mindset. There isn't enough to go around. Yeah, you know, I was once told that you should never put your clients on your website because someone's going to go on there and steal. And I went, fuck me, Google exists. Google private equity firms, I'm sure you'll find that list be existing. So again, scarcity mindset. Oh, there's not enough business out there, you must hold on to it. Whereas plentiful mindset, there's enough business for everybody. And if we're not serving our clients well enough, then our competitors deserve to take it. Number 10, your own limited thinking. If you have not enough space, write down limited thinking. I can't do this, I haven't got a degree. It used to be one of my things. Not smart enough, can't do it, I haven't got a degree. Your own limited thinking. Number 11, and I don't care who you are and who the hell you think you are, you have an ego, everybody has a level of ego. Number 12, your contentment and mediocrity. Contentment in mediocrity. Yeah, your contentment and your mediocrity. If I told you all tomorrow that one of your relatives will die unless you achieve a send out, if you're on the candidate side, or you achieve a get search on within the next 24 hours, 
your contentment and mediocrity would go out the window. All about urgency, pace, what's what's important for you right now. And you can do everything in your power to get a search on. Alex is like, no, 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 fuck him. Right? But, oh, that smell, that was dreadful. And 13, we talk a lot about, or you may have heard a lot about fear of failure, but there is another one, and that is fear of success. <coughs> That also links into the numbers 1 and 8, drive your 13. You'll get comments when you start earning more money, such as, you've changed, you're different. Oh, look, oh yeah, you're too good for this bar now, oh yeah, it's got too much money, you will get that. And that will drive your fear of success, because what if your friends don't like me anymore? because I'm too successful. It might sound a bit fucking weird, but it's true. Okay, and number 14. I just want you to leave space now, I'm gonna come back to it. You've written down a list of people, right? What I want you to do is just to circle around the one that creates the most emotion for you. The one that if they were stood over your shoulder all fucking day, you would work harder because of it. So which one drives the most emotion? We're not going to talk about it. I'm not interested in who it is. This is your stuff. I've done exactly this exercise and I ain't sitting down and sharing it with you guys. So well, you're not sharing it with me. You're not, unless you're going to share it with somebody else. You're more than welcome. But we're not sharing it as a group. So circle around whoever it is. Whichever one you just think, oh, do you know what? Yeah, fuck you. And it could be somebody you love, but it could also be the driver. So there's a level of conflict potentially within your circle. Now, you, de- you have 13 types of enemies. Those enemies you can use to drive you along, push you along, and, and, and get you to where you want to be. There's a 14th type of enemy, which is better than all the enemies you've just written down. Does anybody want to have a guess as to what the best yes, enemy is? Uh, but it was a good guess. Second? The world. Uh, going to come up against the world? It could be. Although we'd have to define that because that's, that's a lot of people, nine billion worth of people to go up against. Any other guesses? Something to do with money. Uh, money being your enemy? Sure. Well, no, but I don't know. No, it's a good, it's a good shout out. Any other ideas? I want people to shout out. It's not about, oh, I don't, I don't want to say something wrong. What are you thinking, man? Is it about the journey or the process? Fear of rejection? That's probably not your enemy, but that's, that's the part you want to enjoy the most. <clears throat> uh, fear of rejection would be a pretty big enemy. Okay, so what Patrick Ed David talks about is that these 13 people that you just listed down are all the drivers and emotions that potentially have got you to the level you're at and potentially will get you even further, right? You may distance yourself from those enemies because you don't want the negativity, but you will always bring it back to you. Remember what I said at the start, every business leader that is hugely successful, that you respect, that you follow, you may even hate, you may despise, has a significant level of insecurity. And they are trying to fill that insecurity by being hugely successful. And that is what drives them. So there could be that they were bullied at school, it could be that um, they were, you know, their dad left, their mum left, you know, they were an orphan, whatever, that drives them to achieve what they need to do and they're, they're chasing it. Now, Patrick Ben Davis' perspective of the very best enemy that you can choose is people who are beating you because their vision and accomplishments are greater than yours. Now, on the back of this exercise, what I did was I created a list of people who are beating me with because their vision and accomplishments are greater than mine. I created a list of private equity executive search firms. I found out about who their owners were and what they're doing. I found out about their revenue, their organizations. I wrote down their headcount of their businesses. And then I put raw selection in a lead table and I will slowly chip away. Hopefully not slowly, but I'm fast lead. 
quickly. There we go. Speak yeah. English. Quickly chip away at those businesses and take them over. Right? I'm taking positives from my enemies. I've also written down companies in Leeds, people in Leeds that I hate. And I've looked at all the recruitment businesses and the people that someone you hate, manipulators, manipulators, gossipers, someone to prove wrong. You know, there's, we've all got something inside us where someone's gone, yeah, I don't think you're going to make it. I don't think you're going to do that. And I got told this. I got told my business would go under within two years and I'd be going looking for a new job. And that was from someone that I respected and it drove, it drove, it drives me on even to this day. Just remember sitting there and you go, you'll probably fail in two years and you won't come back. And I was like, fuck you. I was like, the best thing you've ever said. Thank you very much for that. Right? So, for you, identifying people that are beating you because their vision and accomplishments are greater than yours. Now, it might be that you choose and go, all right, well, I can think of someone like, I'm missing a lot at the moment, to Brad Cardon. Could be a good person to choose, wouldn't be an immediate, because Brad Cardon's wealth is, is, is a billion, and he's now going for multi-billions, um, and his next goal is 100 billion. You might be a little bit far ahead for you guys to chase and feel like you're winning against him. You can study him and learn from him. He might be one of your enemies, but he's one of your 10 and he's your 10. So, what I'd be thinking about, and if you don't know people at the moment that you can write down, it's well worth looking at them, right? Who does your job in another recruitment business that does private equity? That person may never know who you are, and that's fine. But you're looking, and you're studying, and you're learning from that person. You're taking everything you possibly can until you take over that individual. You then go again. And you find another enemy, and you study, and you learn, and you take from them, and then you go again. So it might be that one of your enemies is somebody that you currently work with. It's not that you want them to fail. You want them to be the best possible version of them. Because if they're the best possible version of them, you're learning everything you can from them. So it might be that one of you sits here and goes, I want to be a manager, I want to build 500k plus, and you write down Jack Burns again. You don't hate Jack Burns, you don't treat him like you would do a normal enemy, you study him and you learn everything that he's trying to get from it, and then you go and you beat him, and then you choose somebody else. Does that make sense? So that's the mindset that you're looking for to start chipping, chipping away at people. Right? When I created my list, there's recruitment firms that have been around for 20 years where our revenue is bigger than them. And I was like, fuck. And it actually made me think, oh shit, they're the wrong enemy because I've already beaten them. So if I went, right, HW Global Partners, I think its revenue is 1.2 million or something. Brilliant. We're already bigger than HW Global Partners. They've got other recruitment businesses and total groups from levels 22 million. But for what their search business, I was like, right, well, I could choose that business, I could chase them, and not the right enemy. Because they're, if I'm bigger than them, fantastic, I want to be the next level. Dartmouth Partners revenue is 22 million. Uh, PER's revenue, which is exclusive, private equity, professionals only, and they do most of their work UK, a little bit Latin America, and, uh, and DAC region, is 15 million. That's just private equity, not portfolio. How can you turn skills? Uh, I what is it? Skills, skills challenge. Director Bank and the other one. Um, they're about one point nine million. The other one's one point four. So it's how do you then chip away? Because then you can study those businesses. You can study those individuals. Right. I'm not saying that you go out there and find businesses because that might not be right for you, but that's right for me. What I'm saying is you find individuals that you can study and learn from. You then take over that individual and you go. And it might be you've got a list of five. One of them you can take over within within six months. You learn everything you possibly can from that individual, and then you go on to the next thing. Make sense? So again, this exercise is for you to do and for you to learn to do. If you want to talk about it, come and talk to me about it. Talk to you about it in your any one to ones, or come and grab me during the day, whatever you want. But choose your five, rank them, and go after them. Learn what do they post on social media, what don't they post on social media, they didn't do anything on social media, they don't, okay, fine. 
you might be one of your other five has somebody that does post something on social media you can emulate that how hard do they work what do they do etc 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 right do they do speaking gigs the video is why study those people become better than them the goals and that's off create a level of competition if you're in a running race to do 100 meters and all your mates are lined up next to you it might be that your goal is not to come last and that's fine because you know all your mates are going to be pretty much Olympic sprinters and that's cool you can then begin to chip away at each of them but if all your mates are in line and running you're going to run faster than you are if you're running your own so choose your enemies and go after them use the first 13 as emotional inspiration use the number 14 as your person to learn from and develop from and then when you feel like shit, remember the fact that my year six teacher told me I'd probably amount to nothing. You shouldn't remember that. Remember your equivalent. <laughs> right? Remember the person that told you that you wouldn't get to where you want to be. Because that's your fuel for your fire and the people that are executing better than you are the people to learn from.